This video is sponsored by me. Hey, have you been thinking about getting started in woodworking and you just don't know where to begin? Maybe, maybe you've been, let's face it, you've been sitting around on that couch way too long just watching YouTube videos, woodworking YouTube videos. And what you see, you see all these guys and gals with massive shops and, and billions of dollars, literally billions of dollars worth of tools. And you think, oh, I wanna do that, but I can't afford all that. Well, today is your lucky day because I have assembled a free guide you can download showing you how you can get all the tools you need to get started for under a thousand dollars. Download it over at mytoollist.com and you'll be building your first project this weekend. I'm not much of a grilling kind of guy, but I do have a grill and I use it from time to time and unfortunately right now it's just sitting on the patio which means whenever I wanna grill something, it just involves a lot of squatting. A few years ago, I made a grill stand for that very same grill, but it had some problems with it. And the main problem was is I didn't have a big enough space for the propane tank to fit in there. It would fit in there fine, but I couldn't reach the handle well. It was really uncomfortable. So this time I decided to just take it all back to basics. In fact, I wanted to make this as simple as possible, yet functional, so, it's only going to require 12 one by four boards. I'm only going to need my miter saw and a drill to put it all together. Plus this project is so simple that you could also make it using just a circular saw if you didn't have a miter saw. The ends of these store-bought boards are sometimes kind of rough or not quite square. So I always like to cut them off first. I can cut a lot of these boards out to start with. I'm gonna kind of work my way up from the bottom of the stand. Whenever I have pairs of matching boards, I can cut those at the same time, stacked one on top of the other, just to make sure that they're the same length. On boards where I've got more than two that need to match, I can set up a stop block to get repeated cuts. This is gonna be the lower shelf that holds the propane canisters. What I'm gonna do is glue and screw these cross pieces into the front and back. It's a little unusual to be gluing the end grain to the face grain. But really all I need this to do is hold sort of for a little while because it's gonna get all of its strength once this whole unit is screwed onto the legs. If you're gonna make this kind of a joint, it's critical that you drill a pilot hole deep into that end grain. And the longer the screw you use, the better. The pilot hole will also prevent this board from splitting this close to the end. The center cross piece is the easy one. Since it's in the middle, the long board has less chance of splitting. So the way I want to construct this is that the upper shelf where the grill sits is going to be wrapped around the legs. And the lower shelf, this one that I just put together, is going to sit on the inside of the leg, just so that the lower shelf is a little bit smaller than the upper shelf. So I think that the best way to assemble this and to help keep it square is to put a long kind of temporary board here just to kind of prop it up a little bit. Then I can set this down here wherever it goes for the lower shelf and then the upper shelf I can square this like that. So I've got everything set in place where it should go and I'm just kind of checking to make sure that it's square. So basically it's square. 
<laughs> when you're building something like this, you know, you just don't want to drive yourself too crazy trying to get it perfectly square because these are off the rack one by fours. Uh, if you wanted to do this exactly, you would need to joint the edges to make sure that they were perfectly square because chances are these have a little bit of unevenness to them. But when you're making something like this, once it all comes together, you're never going to notice those small little differences. And if it's slightly out of square here or there, it doesn't really matter. Shh. Don't tell other woodworkers I said that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna screw this into place. I wanna make sure to drill a pilot hole over here since it's so close to the edge of that board. It'll help prevent it from splitting. You know, I probably didn't think this through as well as I should have. <laughs> so now I want to do the other side, you know, but this is just going to fall over. But you know what I think I can do? First I got to put the legs on there. Like this. All right? You, you with me so far? Okay. So the legs sit on there like that. And then... I need to mark them. That's what I gotta do, I have to mark them. You know what, I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, why didn't I just make two of those boxes to begin with, the larger one and the smaller one? Well, I was overthinking that and I thought, well, it'll probably be better just to do one because then I can make sure that the top one is sized exactly if I just kind of wrap it around around the frame. Here we are. 13 years I've been doing this on this channel. <laughs> this, this is what you get. You just need to mark where this, how high up the legs go. If you were going to build one of these yourself, and let's face it, you're not, but if you were, <laughs> you might want to come up with a different strategy than I did. This is the joy of woodworking though, really. You know, you just kind of, you just kind of make it up as you go along. Steve, when are you gonna make a project video? Steve, when are you gonna make a project video? <laughs> you looking at the view count on this video? <laughs> this could be my first project video to get a negative view count. <laughs> People are gonna watch it and then give back their view. And say, nah, <laughs> second thought, of, I'll go watch another video. I'll go watch somebody else. If this is your first time here, welcome. Don't forget to smash that. You know, one of the ways you can check to make sure something is square is by measuring the diagonals. I never do that. I'm just expected to say that as a YouTube woodworker. Let's see here. Yeah, they're, 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 they're pretty diagonal there. Yeah, this is probably the dumbest way to build this thing. It's all good. It's a learning experience. Now I just need to measure for this cross piece here and to do that, I want to measure it over here since this side is probably sagging a little bit. So I'll just use this board to get an accurate measurement. See, this was actually my idea to begin with, was I was going to be measuring it as I went along, but it sort of turned out that way. On this connection, I want the screw to go into this board and not the end grain of that top board. It'll just make it a little bit stronger. There's probably no better finish to offer protection from the elements than paint. 
What I want to do here is make sure that all of the surfaces of the wood are covered with paint inside and out. So it's just going to be easier to paint this part of the frame first before I put the top pieces and the lower pieces on. So this is some leftover porch and floor paint that we use to paint this big, ugly concrete retaining wall in the backyard. This past year, we finally got rid of the last little bit of grass lawn that we had in the backyard and had it all re-landscaped. So now it's all low water requirements, drought resistant and kind of a desert landscape. It looks super cool. I love it. And this color fits in nicely with it. I've got a darker shade I'm going to try to use for the slats and I hope I have enough of it. I want to make sure I get these completely covered with paint for protection. The end grain is really soaking up a lot of that paint. By the way, you can glue end grain now, you know. Keep all of these lower slats even, I'm going to clamp a board on right here that they can butt up against. I could make some little spacers to put between these to make sure that they're all spaced evenly, but I think I can just eyeball it. You know, one thing about woodworking, I've said this before, is that Anybody who comes over to your house and looks at anything you made is not going to come equipped with a tape measure and make sure that things like this are spaced evenly. So as long as they look good, you're good to go. Can you imagine if somebody did come over to your house and started measuring your furniture? <laughs> Weirdest friend ever. <laughs> They'd be like, hey, those aren't spaced evenly. Our whole relationship is based on lies. Plus, if they're not exactly evenly spaced, it, it adds to the custom DIY charm of the project. Well, that was dumb. I totally forgot to put in this center brace. I think I'll give this one last coat on the top, plus it'll cover up those screws. The other nice thing about this stand that the old one didn't have is I've got plenty of room over here to set down plates and forks and all of that stuff. The other one, I just didn't have enough space for that. So this is going to work out perfectly.